Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Mac OS Big Sur inside VMware Workstation Pro on a Windows 10 PC. This installation will require a few extra steps, but I'll provide everything you need and walk you through it step by step. So let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's take a look at the system requirements that you're going to need to get this installed. So this installation is going to be done on a Windows 10 PC. So I have Windows 10 and I've installed VMware Workstation 16 Pro. You can use previous versions of Workstation Pro, like version 15, and the process will be fairly similar. If you haven't already installed Workstation Pro and you're looking to do that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through those steps. Next, you'll need a CPU with four cores or more available. For RAM, four gigs is the minimum, but you're probably gonna to wanna to do eight. And for hard disk space, the minimum is gonna be 80 gigs, unless you're planning on installing more applications. If so, then you're gonna to wanna to increase it a bit. For files, the two main things that you're gonna need is gonna be the Big Sur ISO image file and the Auto Unlocker, which can be downloaded from GitHub. Everything we're doing will be linked in the description below, as well as a link to my homepage that'll walk you through all the steps, step-by-step step, if you prefer a blog format. If you find this video useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying my best to grow this channel as big as I possibly can. Okay, so here we are at the desktop of Windows 10. And the first thing that we wanna do is unlock VMware Workstation Pro. Now I already have it running right now, but by default, it's not gonna accommodate a Mac OS operating system. Apple doesn't want it to run on anything but Apple hardware, so we have to run an unlocker so it can actually run on VMware Workstation. So you gotta make sure that you shut it down completely. So we're gonna exit out of here and uh, in the tray, make sure there's nothing in here and you can also go into your task manager. So basically anything in here that has VMware in it, just kill it off, we don't want it to be running. And uh, we can then close it off and then what we're gonna do is download the unlocker. Now the unlocker can be found on GitHub it's by Palo Projects, and these guys are geniuses. They've created an amazing tool that you can download. It's the latest release that we have here is version 1.13. We'll just click on that, and then we can just scroll down a bit here, and we're gonna download this file. I'm gonna be putting the address for this unlocker in the description so you can easily find it and download it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it, and here it is, I'm just gonna extract it. As you can see, I already have my Big Sur ISO downloaded. If you do not have your Big Sur ISO downloaded, go ahead and find that linked in the description below. Next, what we wanna do is run this unlocker. So here it is, it's the unlocker.exe. Uh, I recommend just running it as administrator just to avoid any issues. Get a prompt like this, you can just say yes to it, and it's gonna go ahead and run it. Now this file is a little bit over 600 megs, will take a little bit to download and install on your computer. What I'll do here is I'm just gonna skip to the end of when it's completed. Okay, the download has been completed and you can see that they have just listed out all the services they've automatically rebooted. So everything seems to be in order. We can hit enter and it's gonna quit. And now we're done with the unlocker. Again, you wanna make sure that you have your ISO already downloaded because that's what we're gonna be using next. So I'm just gonna minimize this window and you go ahead and gonna open up VMware. We have the VMware Workstation Pro open and we're gonna be selecting create a new virtual machine. And we'll be using the typical and click on next. And what we wanna do here is we wanna browse and find our ISO file. And I have that selected and then you can click on open and we'll be leaving that as is and then clicking on next. Now we have Apple Mac OS X uh, available in this list. So this isn't available by default. That's why we ran the unlocker to get this option. And then in here in the list, we're gonna be let, selecting Mac OS 11. Then we can click on next. Now you can leave the name as is and the location as is, but if you have a reason to change it for space or whatever reason, you can go ahead and do that here. When you're done, you can click on next. And for here, the maximum disk size right now we have is 80 gigs. 80 gigs is definitely the minimum that you want. If you're planning on installing a lot of applications, you might want to increase that. For me, this is going to be fine, so I'll click on next. And then we have everything else here that's ready to go. We can click on finish, and we're back at the VMware Workstation desktop. The next thing that we have to do is edit the VMX file. So we're going to be right-clicking on this and go to open VM directory. So it's automatically selected in the list. We're going to right-click on it, and we're going to select open with, and I'm going to be using notepad more apps, there we go, notepad, select open. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to the bottom 
of the text file. And we're going to be clicking in here to place our cursor. And we're going to paste in a few parameters right now. And you just want to make sure everything is aligned. And this is basically uh, letting it believe that it's on a MacBook Pro version 14.3, and it gives an ID number. So we want to make sure that we can save this by, by clicking on File and then Save. And we're ready to go. So we can close out of this, and we can close out of this, and we're ready to just make a couple modifications here. Everything I've just done will be in the description below, as well as a link to my blog that goes through all these steps, step by step, if you run into any issues. So here is the virtual machine and we have the device uh, properties listed here. We're gonna be beefing it up a little bit because it doesn't run very well on the basic specs, specifically the memory and processors. So I'm gonna be clicking on the memory right over here and uh, I'm gonna increase it. I'm gonna go up to eight gigs. Um, if you can go up to 16, you should definitely do that. Four, it's gonna be sluggish, so I don't recommend that. Next for processors, the number of cores, like it can run on two cores, but I would definitely go to four or more. If you can afford that, you should do it. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Everything else can be left as is. Then you can click on OK. And now we're ready to install the operating system. So by doing that, we're just gonna click on the power up button and we're gonna let it go. This process might take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna jump to the next step. Okay, so we're at the first window here, and the first thing that it's asking me is language. So I'm gonna leave it as English, and then I'm gonna click on Next. And the next step is to actually format the drive that we are using. So we're gonna be using the disk utility, and then click on Continue. And we wanna select the virtual SATA drive that's over here, and then we're gonna click on Erase. And now you, in the name, you can give it any name that you want. I'm just gonna keep mine consistent, so I'm just gonna call it Mac OS. 11, and I'm gonna leave it as it is. And then we're gonna be doing journaled over here. And then I'll leave that as default, and then we'll click on erase. This only takes a few seconds for it to format. And now it's done, so we'll click on done. And now we can close out of this disk utility window. And we're ready to install. So we're gonna select the install Mac OS Big Sur, and then click on continue. Okay, so we're at the installation window now for Big Sur, and what we can do is click on Continue, and we get the user agreement here, so we can just select Agree, and then Agree. We only have one drive to select here, so we'll select that, and then click on Continue, and it's gonna take about 15 minutes for it to go ahead and finish copying over everything that's required for this installation. So what I'll do is I'll jump to the end of this part. So now we're ready to configure the last few steps of Mac OS, and the first thing is uh, to select a region. Steps of Mac OS, just so we'll select the United States and then click on continue. And I'm gonna be leaving the default preferences here for language and input sources. And accessibility I'll leave as is and click on not now. Data and privacy we'll leave as is and click on continue. Migration assistant, we're not making any changes or migrating anything. So I'm gonna go over here and select not now. With Apple ID, because there's issues with this running on a virtual machine, I'm not creating anything or using anything. I'm just gonna click on set up later and then skip. Terms and conditions, and I'll just click on I agree. And then I agree again. And now we're ready to assign a name for the account. Then once you have that entered, click on continue. So we're just gonna use the default for express setup. You can click on customize settings if you want. And then I'm just gonna click on continue. Analytics, I'm just gonna leave as default and click on continue. For screen time, I'll set up later. So I'll select set up later. And I don't wanna have Siri on, so I'm just gonna uncheck this, and then I'm gonna click on continue. And right here, you can just change the theme that you'd like if you want it on automatic, light, or dark. I'm just gonna leave it as default as light, and then click on continue. So here we are at the desktop of Mac OS Big Sur. So now what I can do is I can just go over here to this disk, and I can just right click on it and select eject. So we're releasing the ISO image from the virtual machine. And one of the last things that we can do is we can install VMware tools, which allow us to stretch the screen to full size and also allow more functionality. We can do that by clicking on the VM menu at the top and then select VMware tools. And then we can click on install and we get prompted within the operating system here. So now all we have to do is just double click on VMware tools. We're gonna double click on that and it's gonna launch the application. And at the first prompt, we can click on continue. 
and we get prompted for our password. Now this is the password for the user that we just created. So I'm gonna type in my password here and then click on install software. Okay, if you get this option, which you probably will, you wanna click on open security preferences. And then inside here, you wanna click the lock to unlock it. And it usually happens twice. So we'll just type in our password, hit enter, it's gonna unlock it. And then we wanna click on allow. So we're just giving permission to VMware. It's asking to restart the system. I'm gonna say not now, I'm gonna allow this to complete. So the installation was successfully done. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and click on restart. This might just take a few minutes while it reboots. All the VMware tools and all final configurations will be done and we load up and we're just gonna be logging back in. Okay, so we're back up. We're at the login screen right now and I'm just gonna type in my password. No, I did not pick that graphic, although it's nice lips. Let's log in here. Okay. And here we are at the desktop of Big Sur Mac OS inside VMware Workstation Pro 16. We're up and running and I'll just go over here so you can see the version that we have. And I'll go about this Mac. And here we go. So we have version 11.1 of Mac OS Big Sur running on this PC. So VMware Tools is installed and you can see that we have the full screen. Uh, that's one of the capabilities of VMware tools. It also adds a lot of other functionality like drag and drop and copy and paste from your desktop to the virtual machine and other features like that. So you might be interested in actually installing VMware tools. Everything that we did in this video will be linked in the description below. You'll have a link to my blog that gives you all the steps that we just followed step by step in case you get lost anywhere. And we also have links for all the downloads and configurations that you'll need to get this up and running. Installing Mac OS is not a standard installation, so it does take those extra steps to get it up and running cleanly. You also notice some leg issues. A lot of people experience leg issues. That's why I'm saying you should add more cores and add more memory just to get this running as smoothly as possible. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. And if you're looking for any files or anything related to doing this installation, I'm gonna put a link to my blog in the description as well so you can get everything that you need right there. If you have any questions, you can also go to our forum, which is forum.geekwire.com and post any questions there. The community is great and a lot of people are eager to help. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're looking for installations of other operating systems on VMware or VirtualBox or Hyper-V or anything virtual, we're doing it all here on GeekWire Guides. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.